Welcome to The Shack. My name's Barbara Gray from Clarity here in the UK and um, we're set to doodle G today, the letter G. As you know, Clarity's um, celebrating the year of the alphabet and, uh, and every Monday and Thursday, mostly, we get together and we, we doodle something that begins with a, a, a particular letter. And today, last week we had a really, uh, a really good time doing F for fashion. And today we're going to be doing G. So Paul is in the building um, with your good selves, our Paul Church. So if you have any questions, he's, gonna, he's going to be there to answer them. And, and I'm going to crack on with the letter G. G's a good one. G's a good one. And the general consensus uh, was G for giraffe. So that's what we're going with today. I hope you like it. Um, so yeah, yesterday afternoon, I, um, I doodled a giraffe for us. And then, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it immensely. And I think you will too. So, um, so we'll do the letter and then we'll do the, and then we'll do the doodle. All right, how are you anyway? And it's raining here in the southeast of England once again, just in case you were wondering. Yep, I hope that you're all well. Fortunately, the weather was nice. It was G for good this weekend, so I went G for gardening. How about yourselves? You too? Now, what's going on here? Let me just get rid of that. Good morning, everybody. Hey, there they all are. Good to have your company. Well, it's certainly not gardening weather here in the southeast this morning, is it? Um, yeah, and before, while we're waiting for our friends to join us, there are a few things that uh, I want to tell you about this week. So, so tomorrow at six o'clock in the evening, I'm launching a really excellent, um, really, really lovely uh, set of stamps and I think you'll like them. I think you'll like them very much, actually. Uh, so they're on at six o'clock in the evening. Therefore, um, Paul always travels with me to Create and Craft. So he won't be doing the Groovy Tuesday tomorrow morning because he's helping me. He's driving me up and being my support. So, so no Groovy Tuesday tomorrow. Uh, but... And also, there is there is a saturation point, isn't it? It's like how much can you handle? You know, we Paul was on telly yesterday. I'm here now. Then tomorrow at six o'clock in the evening, we'll be on Create and Craft. And at nine o'clock in the evening, we'll be on Create and Craft. Now, there's only so much time that our friends, our fans, are you know can give us really. And so that said, on Wednesday, get your pencil out. I'll be on again at 10 o'clock in the morning and at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, stop permitting. I've got a feeling these are going to fly, though. I really do. Um, and then on Thursday evening, we won't do the shack, okay? Again, it's about that saturation, and it's also about how much can I handle. So, so I'm going to take my foot off the pedal on Thursday. But then on Friday evening, we've got our craft along, haven't we? So... Another little shout out for the craft along. That's using though. Ah, oh, I've been doing a little bit of prep for it. I think you'll be really, really happy with the craft along. If you haven't got your stamps yet, I was pretty chuffed with what I came up with at the weekend. So these are the stamps that I'm encouraging you to get. Okay, again, year of the alphabet as you can see here. So, so this is the step. This is the stamp set with the mask that we're going to use in the um in the craft along on facebook live or youtube and that's live now on friday evening at seven o'clock so what do you need well um i will get very proactive on thursday telling you exactly what you need but i can tell you that you're going to need some brushes you're going to need that stencil you're going to need the clarity card and a versamark but like i say I will, there's a list actually on, um, our, Paul will give you the link. There's a list already on the website under craft alongs. So, but I'll keep going in and updating that. And then what I'll do is once I, I've got a better kind of 
structure to the craft along. I'll go in and start splitting those things up so that you can put them on trays. Card one, clean and tidy. Card two, arty grungy. Card three, gel press. Just so you know, we're definitely going jelly plate on Friday night. Yeah, be fun. So you need your stamps to do that. Maybe you just want to come along and keep us company, you know, and that's okay too. You don't have to get the stamps in order to join in. It's free. It's free. It's free company. There you are. So and then the last thing this week, so we're really ramping it up. And then on Saturday at one o'clock and four o'clock, it's our friend Deborah Wheeler is on Create and Craft again. So there you go. A very, very busy week. And uh, just to recap, can you hear that howling wind in the background? Um, no Groovy Tuesday tomorrow and no Shack on Thursday because we've got the ODS on Create and Craft and then we've got the Craft Along on Friday night on YouTube and Facebook Live. There you go. It's not nice in Crawley. No, Karin. I know. Same part of the world. Sonne in Kiel. Nice to have your company, Marion. So in the north of Germany, the sun is shining. I'll uh, give it a minute. <laughs> if you don't like the weather in England, just wait a minute. You know what they say, April showers. Hail storms in Warrington. Golly. Good. Sound is nice and clear, Paul says. And we've got over 100 people in the room already. Well, what else are you going to do on a Monday, eh? Okay, let's get started because I really want to show you me G for giraffe. Right, I know what's going to come in a minute. Someone's going to say, oh, you're having a giraffe. Come on. We can do it. We can do it. It's really, really lovely, okay? I think you'll like it anyway. I do. So let's have a look. First of all, we'll do our letters, all right? So we've got our A. This is where we're going. B, C, D, E, right? F. And now we're going, we did F for fashion, which was glorious. And yes, we are making a set of stamps as we speak. Jazz is working on those lovely fashion calligraphy folk. Yeah, of course we are. Um, due to popular demand, of course. So let's do G. And what we're going to do now is we're going to use the, see the, the lines here, just for those of you who are new to the fold. The letters from top to bottom are seven centimetres or two and three quarter inches, right? And then the bar where the cutoff is or the top of the lower case is seven, seven centimetres, uh, four centimetres, sorry. So it's seven and four centimetres or one and a half inches. And the one and a half inches is just a little bit well, obviously, if it's seven centimetres, if it were bang in the middle, it would be three and a half centimetres. But letters always look better. A letter looks better if the top half is more is, is smaller. There you go. So I'm going to grab the C because the C is going to be my... That, to me, is obviously nearly a G, isn't it? So what we'll do is we'll pop the the sea behind a piece of, oh, it sounds like a storm here. Is there a hurricane outside and I'm merrily, an H for hurricane and I'm merrily <laughs> doodling away here in this windowless TV studio. <laughs> Paul, what's the weather like outside? Paul's got a window in his office. <laughs> there. So we've got a piece of clean got the one with the letter on as a guide. Then I've put a piece of copy paper. Oh, hang on. Wrong one. Copy paper under there because that protects the rest of the... There we are. And I've got my ruler so I can use my Perga ruler on this. And I've got some um, groovy, a groovy tab on there as well if I want it. And I'm going to use a pencil because that, my friends, is all we need, isn't it? An HB pencil, have I got one? Let's have a look. I've got loads of different pencils here. HB, there we go. Just a bog standard HB pencil. And that's probably, that's the point. 
you know, with the shack. I know it's lovely to hang out and you do hone your drawing skills for certain. But at the end of the day, you know, and I'm saying get the stamps and get this and get that and get the tracing paper and get the pencils. And get... You don't have to have any of that. All you need is a piece of paper. We go right back to basics, a piece of paper and a pencil. And I've got either earache. I don't know why. It's been a couple of days now. It's blowing a hoolie, is what Paul says. It's blowing a hoolie outside. Well, aren't we grateful, G for grateful, that we're indoors? Hmm? We are. We're very grateful. In fact, right, it's Monday. And let's, because that's the thing about the shack, isn't it? We can kind of direct our thinking and reframe our, our thoughts. You look out the window and you think, that's all you need to think. And straight away you're miserable because it's like, here we go again. It's raining. It's miserable. I can't go in the garden. The dogs need a walk. I can't take the dogs for a walk. The cats are in and out traips in mud through the kitchen me 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 well do you know what turn it around in your head get grateful g is for grateful g is for good g is for glad come on positive words friends g's for grateful g's for good g's for glad g's for grace g is for come on give us some words Goodness, grace, gratitude, glad, um, generosity. I like the word generosity. There are so many great words that begin with G. Why I ended up on giraffe. Glorious, glorious. What a lovely word. Gratitude, glorious. I have no C. Oh, no. <laughs> Why haven't you got a C? Well, do the G and then you can work your way backwards. I've no C. Glorious, gleeful, giving. Giving's a great word. Giving, goodness. You see? And the thing about these words is obvious. They're uplifting, aren't they? And as soon as you start to say these words, gracious. Gracious is lovely, Jane. Grin, that's Dave, of course. You see, grin, gracious, gracious, grin, glorious, gleeful, giving, groovy, feeling groovy. And straight away, grateful. You see, who gives the monkeys about the weather? It's all good. She's going to wing it. Okay. Now, let's have a look. So if that's the, G, if that's the C in the background... Then the G, to my mind, it just goes like that, like that, and come, well, that's a bit wrong. And this is me being cocky, see. I thought I won't worry about practicing my G because that's obvious. I'll just do a, yeah, this is actually going to be easy. I can wing it, I said. <laughs> there you are, that's, there's a G. Should we come out like that? Yeah, I like that, don't you? So we're going to go like that, like that, like that, and then round we go. And all I'm going to do, I'll bring that one down there, and I'm going to copy the C in the background to get my... This is, apart from drawing a really good alphabet on which we can hang our hats, um, it's a great way of getting your eye in. Do you know what I mean? Do you think that's going to look right? I reckon. Oh, yeah, good G. So if we do that there, see, if we wanted, we could, I wonder if it would look good if we come down like that. I'm getting a bit, do you know, that might look good. Let me make a little line there, okay? So you do that. There we are. I haven't got my pink rubber with me. I'm going to have to use my white one. That'll do. Right, so if I do that there, like so, I wonder if that's going to look good. Yeah, it is. So then we're going to take this bit out here and there. Oh, let me 
me just grab one of them brushes. That looks pretty good for a G. It's a bit further over than I might like. This is where you wish you had done your homework, isn't it, Barbara? Yeah. <laughs> That's all right, though. Do you know, he's going to look really great. G for great. That'll do. And then this G, right, this is going to be nice. So we're going to come round like that. That's the, the, the front end of the G. And then that's the inside part of the G. So that's going to come down like that. Are you doing this? That'll work nicely. And then this is going to come up like so, I reckon. And then we'll come down like that, round like that. What do you think? Yeah. I think so. So that's going to be... Let's have a look. Yeah. You see, you do need to prepare, Barbara. But that's all right. I was more excited about the giraffe, to be fair. <laughs> and the other thing is, friends... One thing I've learned in the last couple of years is not to sweat the small stuff. And the other thing I've learned, <laughs> which we've been talking about, haven't we, for it, relentlessly for years, is, yeah, I quite like that little G. Hey, I might have to jazz this up a little bit. I'm, do you know what I think? I think that this should be here like that. I do. I think the G should be there. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Or somewhere in between there. And then if you do that like that, I reckon that that will be better. Look, don't you think that's more like it? So less going out that way. Let me get rid of all that. And then you'll see. Choices, choices, choices. Yeah, so what I'm saying is one of the things that I really have learned in the shack with you, friends, is one, not to sweat the small stuff, isn't it? and two, there are no judges. There you go. I, I prefer that, don't you? Yeah, without all that gubbins there. That'll do. Right, good. That's the giraffe sorted. <laughs> See, if I take that away and I put this one in here, now this is the thing. Once you've got the basic shape right, then you can go in, and now you can chuck jazz it up a bit can't you like that that's better there you go and now we like it yeah we do hey nice torrential it is i can hear it there you go g g g for giraffe right do you want to see me g for giraffe are you ready? Now we've done that. Got that out of the way quickly. Yeah, and I think it's important to know that um, another thing you should have learned is that you should never be without an eraser, Paul says. I've got plenty of erasers. I just haven't got one here at Clarity Towers, Mr. Church. Well, I have. I've got loads of rubbers, and I really need them. But I've got, I've got my, I'm all right, I'm all right, I'm on it. Okay. But yes, you do need a rubber, an eraser. Let's have a look at this giraffe then, shall we? We've put that to bed. That's the alphabet sorted. And now we'll go to our giraffe. I think you'll be happy with this. Right. Let's have a look. All right. There you go. So I thought we'll stick to the head. And first I did this one. And I got the kind of the, the sketch. This was me. And then this one, I decided to make him a bit smaller because I thought he would, he would look better smaller. And did I draw this out of my head? Of course I didn't. Of course I went online and looked for a picture of a giraffe. You're having a giraffe, aren't you? For those of you who are not from... England or London, when we say it's rhyming slang, when we say you're having a giraffe, it's the same as saying you're having a laugh. 
okay? You're joking. You're having a giraffe, which means you're having a laugh, okay? And, uh, yeah, you're having a giraffe, aren't you? Of course I had a, I had a look. Of course I Googled it. <laughs> and there's some really good pictures of giraffes, okay? So uh, what's all this, Karin? I don't think I could do that. Well, hang on a minute there, friend. Let's go back to the beginning of this hour. One, don't sweat the small stuff. It's a giraffe. Two, he's huge, right? Do you know that he's 12 to 15 foot tall? I know, okay? But the thing is, if you don't try, you'll never know. So we'll give it a go, all right? And bear in mind that I'm already, the bus driver is about two or three hours ahead of you on this one. I've already studied giraffes on Google. I had a good old look at some giraffes. I, I decided that I was only going to do the head, that the legs and the body were way more than I wanted to tackle. And I think, G for give it a go. Very good. G for give it a go. Love the eyelashes. I know. They, I said to Jazz, they're like yours. Jazz is... Our jazz designer, she's got these beautiful eyelashes. Well, if you're coming to the open days, you'll meet Jazz and her mum because they are in charge of refreshments, okay? And, uh, yeah, so the open days, celebration of all things clarity. And we're still plugging the tickets, okay? It's the event of the year, uh, Saturday the 8th and Friday the 7th. There you go. Friday the 7th of June, Saturday the 8th, come for two days. That's what I say. Come for two days. Find a hotel nearby and make a, a, make a Friday and a Saturday of it. It is so, so fun, okay? And, um, and today, at 6 o'clock this morning, I was looking at Tina Morris's email. Wow, it's tipping down. Can you hear that? Listen. That's rain. Can you actually hear that through the telly? Anyway, so um, so, the, so the tickets for the open day, yeah, absolutely wonderful. We'll be hanging out in a hotel nearby too. And, uh, and you've got everybody there. You've got Linda Williams coming down for a couple of days. Josie Davison's coming down. Um, Jane Telford. So they're the three um, groovers. Then you've got Hazel Edwards. Dave's gone over to Tunbridge to pick up the dye to make the thing that Hazel's going to use in her make and take. Really clever idea. Really clever idea. So we have got make and take. Hazel's in charge of the groovy one. So this morning at six o'clock, I was studying Tina Morris's suggestion. She's got some great, she's doing the make and take for the inky side. So she's got some great ideas. So I've already got Jazz working on those stamps. Yeah. And so slowly I shall start reaching out to the different designers. Let me see. On the inky side, really excited to say that Dee Paramore's back with us this year. So Dee will be in the building. She's going to be, she doesn't know it yet, but I'm going to tell her if she's not listening. She's going to be in charge of the ink clinic because that's what she is the absolute, what she doesn't know about ink, you don't need to know. So I'm going to get Dee on inks, right? Then we've got Eileen. Eileen stencils. If you're listening, Eileen, you just need to let me know which stencils you're going to be using, which stamps you're going to use. Sam Crow, same thing, Jelly Plate Queen. Uh, so we've got those three on that side. And me, I'm going for, I don't think I'm going to have enough pottery this year. So I'll park the pottery, keep my eye on mum, and maybe do some three-way overlay demos. Three-way overlay demos. And Paul, he's on felt and dyes. So all in all, it's going to be a really, really brilliant day. Two days, in fact. And yes, I can hear the rain, Barbara. I thought it was someone flushing the loo. Well, if it is someone flushing the loo, <laughs> then we really do have a problem. <laughs> Yay, that's brilliant news, Barb. Yeah, I know, Hazel. It's so good. It's so good. And wait till you see the groovy plates that Jazz has designed to go with the dye thing that Dave's gone to go and get. I know. All good. It's all good. And back to the giraffe. Now, 
So what we've got is a piece of copy paper. Remember I said all you need is a pencil and a piece of copy paper. So you've got a piece of copy paper, and we're going to fold it into quarters. Let's do that. That immediately gives you the right size. Okay? So let's do that. So we're going to go with a bit of copy paper. Let's not worry about the tracing paper today. You can always do the tracing paper afterwards. Let's just sketch it. Let's just throw caution to the wind and sketch it. So now let's have a look. This one was the first one I did. Just to, This is where I was finding out about giraffes. Look, I found out loads. <laughs> I know. 13 to 15 months pregnant. They sleep standing up. They live 20 to 27 years and they drop the baby. Can you believe it? They drop the baby from a great height. When a baby's born, <laughs> and I thought, surely you'd sit down for that. Nope. They sleep standing up and they drop babies standing up. And apparently, because the umbilical, imagine this. Imagine if humans did this. Because the umbilical cord is shorter than their legs. Thank goodness, right? When the baby drops, <laughs> it tears the umbilical, I know, right? The umbilical cord is severed, and as it hits the ground, the poor little baby giraffe, no wonder they wake up like wondering what's ha happened, because it hits the ground, apparently it's good for their circulation, <laughs> it wakes them up. <laughs> I know. So I had a bit of a chuckle yesterday reading all this. Look, so it drops the baby. They're the tallest mammals on earth. The neck's too short to reach the ground. That was a bit of a mal design. They only drink once every few days. And this is so funny. They sleep with one eye open and their ears twitching. <laughs> That's like Dave. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> I tell you what, the thing I love, it's not even about the drawing, it's about in educating myself about a giraffe. I never knew any of that. Did you? I know they've got a huge heart. They, they're kind as well, but they do have a huge heart because it's the pump for the blood. And because that's around all the way up that neck to the brain, otherwise they'd be passing that left, right and centre. They've got a heart that's like two foot long, to, like a massive like a piston engine. Boof, 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 yeah. So I learned that as well. The heart, there you go, look. The heart is two foot long, 25 pounds. This is funny as well. <laughs> It's got 32 teeth like us, but they're all at the back. <laughs> Can you imagine if all our 32 teeth were all at the back? You'd gum your food. And their tongues are like 24 inches long or something mental. They've got huge tongues. Yeah. On our, when we got married, Dave and I, we got married at Port Lim, which is a zoo, basically, right? Down near Rye, near Hyde. And um, it was brilliant because the day before we got married, like the, the wedding party, if you like, we stayed in these tree houses. We had a wonderful time. And we went to feed the giraffes. We went to hang out with the giraffes. And they, they really are, when you get close to a giraffe, they are so tall. And what was really interesting was to watch them because they haven't got any front teeth. Right? They not, they're not, haven't got any, any of these incisors or anything. So they were using their tongues and they were wrapping their tongues around like branches or, you know, yeah, branches that they were give, given to feed. And then the, the tongue and the gum would just, they would just, imagine trying to do this. They would rip all the leaves off the branch with their, with their tongue. This great big long thing that they wrapped around, right? Yeah, quite something. Anyway, come on, let's get drawing. I'm not procrastinating. So, yeah, so that was my R&D yesterday. 
I decided that we want to go a bit smaller. In order to do that, all I'm going to do is take a ruler and you can you can take a like half an inch. Let's just take half an inch off all, all the sides of me and then that will give you your frame so you know where to stay within. Okay? And this, my friends, is an exercise in relaxing and remembering that it's not over until it's over okay when you when you start really you just want to get the shape right and and make sure that the length of the head is right that the horns okay useful information <laughs> if you if <laughs> if you want to know about giraffes right so oh yeah this is so funny so the giraffe it's got these horns. You can usually tell if it's a male or a female by the horns because the girl's horns, the female horns, they've got little, they're like little tufty like that. The male horns are bald. They've got no hair on them. They're, they're like, they're just like that, right? Um, and that's primarily down to the fact, right, you ready? <laughs> this would not work for me, okay? <laughs> When a male is courting a female, it rams, it nuts with its head, the woman's bladder, the female's bladder, right? This, this, this wouldn't work in English dating, would it? In, in, in human dating. So that's why they're bald, because he, he spends so long ramming the female's bladder until she pees herself. I know. And then, wait for it, TMI, too much information coming up. Then he uh, he drinks her pee to check whether she's ovulating or not. <laughs> I mean, well, could it take off with hum humans? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I would be too happy if a bloke just started ramming my stomach until I peed myself. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, I wouldn't stand for it. No, no, <laughs> nor was I, Jackie. Nor was I. That would be the shortest first day ever. <laughs> anyway, on to the drawing. So what we're going to do now, okay, I'm going to leave him there so that you can see what we're trying to do. Very simple to start with. You've got to leave enough for the horns. Do you remember la yes, last week? We were actually, right, so now let's just get a little, get a head going like that. That's it. Let's just get the head going there, right? Maybe a little bit of a, okay. So we're getting the head going like that. And then the neck is going to be like that. Just get it in the right place. You've got to, so that's his mouth there with his blue tongue. Okay, it's blue apparently. Didn't know that. How weird is that? Glad that's for giraffes and not humans. So am I can. <laughs> I don't know what Anita would say if you tried to pull that stunt. <laughs> anyway, so now we've got the giraffe. Look, we're going to put the, let's put the, the horns on. Look, they're just like that. Okay. Don't overthink it. So you've got a, like a head with a little thing like that. Then we're going to put the ears in. The ears are quite, the ears actually are joined to the horns. Let's just put the ears in like that, as if they were like leaves, like that. Come down a little bit. Yeah. Probably want to come down a bit further, actually, Gray. Just come down a bit further. Because the ears are right by the eyes, okay? So if we put the eyes there, let's just make two, as if it was an insect, just put two, like there, put two circles there and there and there, right? Try and get them opposite each other. <laughs> right, ready? Okay, ears a bit further down, like that. That'll do. And another one there, like that. Okay. Doesn't have to be symmetrical. It's not computer generated, is it? No. Right, so we've got the eye. Ken says that's really taking the pee. It really is, isn't it? 
you're going to come down like that. I'm going to bring the ears into there, ears into there, like that. Right, and then we've got the eye there and there. Right, so bring the eye down a little bit further there, like that. I know you can't believe that this is how this picture started, but that is the fact. Right, so I'm not happy with the way that ears go in, though. Right, I reckon it's not directly responsive. They're not related, these two, okay? If, if in doubt, just say these are North African ones and these are South African ones. Right, so he looks like he's got one of them old-fashioned World War II gas masks on at the moment. So we're going to come down like so. I'm just trying to get you to understand how this evolves. His eye's dodgy. So I'm, I haven't got the right rubber here, but this will do. Right. Right, so you've got that eye there and you've got that eye there. Right, now put an eyelid in and then just flick. Put an eyelid in and then flick for the eye eyelashes. Right, there you go. So you've got your eye in there and that's underneath the eye, like that. Okay. And then they've got a... Going under there, you don't make it too big, it looks too cartoony. Just put a there, do that, right? Okay, so you've got your eye in now. I know it looks ridiculous, but it's that it is what it is, right? So now put some nostrils in here where you've got so you've got this coming down like a mask, like that, right? That's his mouth there. Put the nostrils in there and there on either side, okay, and then from here. Kind of go up, so there's like a, because there is actually, it does go like that. Go up like that and come back down the other side, like that. This I'm going to make a bit bigger. So bring it out a little bit now, like that. Okay? Bring it out a little bit. And this isn't a real exercise in, don't. It's not over till it's over. Do you remember? How often do we say that in, in the shack? How, it's not over until it's over. So now we've got the mouth coming around like that. Okay, we've got the horns. Are we happy with the sort of the shape? Do we think that that's tall enough? Right? They aren't all the same. The ears are in the right place, I think. Maybe do a bit bigger. It doesn't matter if it goes out the picture it's that's just orientation right so that's like that that's like that right the head's like so the head's like this I'm going to get a bit bolder now but you want to shade it we happy with that yet I know you can't believe that this is going to be this but it is okay but you've got to be happy with the shape before you pursue this now bring the neck in like that and bring the the neck in like that okay and make sure you like the shape before you carry on if you don't like the shape you've got to stop now because there's no point in putting all the shading in and all that if you're not happy with the shape do you see so once i'm happy with the shape here we go i think so i think the eye needs a bit more yeah, I need a bit more like that. Here we go. So if you bring the eyes down, look, bring the eyelashes down a bit more. There. So that's like that. It looks a bit sadder then. There. Big eye. Right now, with the with the eyes, just bring in a little black. Give him a bit more personality. The eyes are the windows to the soul, friends. Leave a little bit of white, right? Don't worry about overcooking it. We can always add shade afterwards. This took about 15, 20 minutes to get to, okay? Right, so we've got the eye like that. That will do for now. And then we're going to come in like that. I think, the, I think we definitely want to come in a bit like that, okay? Yeah, we're getting there now, friends. Right, let's have a look at the shading. Let's have a look at the pattern on there. So let's put a bit of pattern on here. I, I, I had a little look at this, and they're kind of like this. They're patches. They're, 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 so it goes like that. 
right? And then, and then it, here we are. There we go. That's very, so we do a little bit around here as well. Okay. It's all right. We're going to get the shade. It's when the shading starts. So put a little bit of inside the ear. So that's the outside ear, like that. Now let's have a think about the way this, because actually this is, if you look at the giraffe and I studied it yesterday, right? The ears and the horn are sort of part. And then there's this, right, here we go. Watch. So the, the ears and the horn are part of the same thing. I might have to come up a bit with this. So the eye, it has this, like, almost like furrows, like this. Like, go up like that. Like three little, go up like that. That's more like it. So it, it really does have those furrows. I mean, that one's a bit wider. This one's a bit narrower. It looks a bit more. That's all right, though. If I don't like it, I can always change it. Not happy with that there. Right. So bring this this head out a bit more like that, and bring the furrows in like that. There you go. That will work. So you've got the furrows in, and then this nose comes up. It the snout comes right up like that. Right. Just put that in there for now. That'll do. Okay. But the 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 horns, if you like. They're sort of attached to the ears, which is why I think I need to bring that ear up like that. Okay. So this comes up like that over the back. Do you see? So this is at the front. I'm really drawing this in heavy now. But if you look, this is around the back like that. I'm going to bring the horns in a bit higher. Yeah? It's all right. So once we are happy with the shape, if you're not happy with the shape, you can't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't keep going because the shape is never going to change, right? I reckon we can work with that one. So he's got his big doleful eyes, right? There you go. He's got his eyelashes. We can work on that. We can do a bit on that right now. Here, this is where the shading starts, okay? But you've got to be sure that you, you're happy. Get the nostril in. Get the nostril in. Can you see this all right? Are we happy here? Is this working? Mine has a very long neck. I'm glad. Are you doodling along with me? That's good. Right, now I'm going to go with the softer. Actually, let me, let me get that area in there. Because this is going to be dark in here, isn't it? You know, like that bit there. It's going to be dark in there. Let me get a different sort of pencil. I'm going to go with a black pencil now, 2B. Right, softer. It's a softer pencil, see? Softer. So what we're going to do now is start by adding a bit of shade. So if I come in like that, let's have a look. So we're going to start bringing the shade in. We haven't done any of this kind of work for ages, have we? Get some shade in where, the, where there's going to be shade. Let's come around here. Right? No, we haven't done anything like this for ages. So there's going to be a, like a, a white line there where the light's hitting it. Right? So we're going to get some shade in that, that area there. And the same on that side there. So I know I'm getting a bit extreme here, but it's to show you the, the line there and there. I may go in with a, let me go in with a, that HB again. There. So now we're going to bring in that line, harden up that line. I'm going in, so here, now let's have a look at the shade. HB pencil. Just start up here. Is it a girl or is it a boy? Well, so we'll just start here. So there's something really, if it's a girl, then we're going to add a little bit of like a tuft. We're going to soften this up, right? So we're just going to go like this, little tiny feathery strokes. 
and that will soften up that top bit there. That's it. And the same in the ears a bit. So it's a bit furrier rather than... So there's no rushing this. There are two things worth noting. One is how hard you press and how... F you, can, you can take the same pencil, the same HB pencil, and you can make it really dark and you can make it really light and you can make it everything in between and you can make it feathery. Yeah? So let's just stick with the one pencil. We can always go in and add depth afterwards or blackness. You know, and that's the thing. When you start going into the 2B, B is for black. So it gets softer and it gets blacker. So now let's have a look. If we come round here, let's use that HB pencil the whole time. But once we've done that, we can always come back and add. So let's look at these furrows above his head. Okay, and his eyes. His eyes are really important, right? So let's have a look. If we bring the eye in, let's have a look. Bring that lid down a bit. I want to bring the lid down a bit. Okay. So all we're going to do is come in there, and bring the lid, just bring the lid in. Look, so he's not got such... See, as soon as you come in, you've given yourself so much eyeball that you can close it up a little bit now. See? So now I'm coming in like that. And now I'm going to make some... There we go. So we get the eye going. Let's put some shade in there. Probably if I... I'll probably get rid of it. He looks like he's been on the tiles, on the town, doesn't he? Look. Let's just get those. <laughs> he looks like he's... <laughs> right, let's get these, these funny... These markings, right? Because they look like furrows. So let's get those furrows going there. Right, just a bit of shading here. That'll do. So it's a little bit dark around the side, isn't it? There we are. Okay. A bit of shading in there. So we're going to kind of break down that, that nose there in the middle, that long nose, because it doesn't really work like that. But the, the, the giraffe does have markings here, right? Not, not necessarily symmetrical, but there's certainly markings down the nose, patchy markings, okay? So let's get those coloured in, because that, that's when it all starts to change. Are we all right or am I on my own? <laughs> eh? There we go. Let's get some markings going here. And you'll see it starts to change it. I think he needs a bit of a bag under his eyes. There you go, a couple of lines. That will help. There. So get your markings in. Shading. Shading here. Right? There we go. Markings on that nose area. I mean, it's all going to kind of blend into one in a minute. There, a bit of shading in the eye. There. Let's get that darker. And here as well. Getting there now. Right. Okay, let's go down the neck. Right, so the best way I found to cover in these bits, because you don't want it all smooth, it's definitely, they are very rough. It's like a camel, not quite as, not quite as rough as a camel, but th that's that kind of, right, so we're going like this. We're going that way, like that, and then that way, cross hatching. Right? So that's the way to get a really... So you're going to go lightly, like that, that way, and then over the top that way. Then another little patch that way. There you go. Turn it round. So you're just going cross-hatch, back and forth. And it's just a really good basis. I don't know. What do I know? I'm only the bus driver, friends. But 
look good when it was finished. I think sometimes when you don't know the rules, it's an advantage because I think sometimes rules are limiting, aren't they? You know? When you when you haven't read the rule book, you can't you just have to figure it out, don't you? There. So now let's have a look round this area here. Because he's got like a let's get his mouth with his thirty two teeth at the back sorted out. So we need a bit of shade here, I think. He's quite, he's got quite a bit of head, like f fuzz, <laughs> like me. <laughs> Comes with age, friends. Hey, I never thought I'd have to shave. <laughs> Get a little fuzz on the ears. We got that. I haven't, I haven't reached that stage yet. <laughs> hey, nose hairs. Oh boy, oh boy. Sucks getting old, don't it? Right, let's get some shade going here. See, and the thing about the grey pencil, the H, and I'm using the same HP pencil for the whole thing now. Let's just do it. Right. The lovely thing about using pencils, you build up the shade, but the, the best thing about it is that you can rub it out if you think you've done too much. Sometimes you get a really good effect by rubbing it out. Doesn't tell you that in the rule book, I bet. Right. We've got a few bristles. Right, let's soften this up a bit now because he's he's softer in the face, isn't he? Right, so we've got choices now. And I think what you do is you go over, you get the shade on this on the side there. Look, this this area here, because he's three-dimensional. We want to get a bit of that going as well, don't we? So let's just do this on this side. Right, so you've got a bit of three-dimension there. Like that. So shadow there. Definitely shadow under here. Right. A bit more on that side as well. Underneath his head. Because that will be quite dark there. He will throw a shadow over himself there, won't he? Yeah. There. Use your finger to smooth it out a bit. And then, see so that's that edge there. So what I did was I, I, I just flicked, flicked that way. Because he's got like, um, not a mane, but yeah, it is like a mane. So I went that way and then I went back the other way. So you get that kind of, mane, right? But you going backwards and forwards, lightly, build it up. There, that works. And then, and then you can go back in and redefine the actual, the line. I'm in the zone now. There, see? How is yours looking? I can't wait to see yours. I reckon they're going to be absolutely fabulous. There you go, let's get some. See, and you can always, if you want to make it a bit whiter in places, just go back in with the eraser take out the colour. If you've if you've made it too grey, then just go back in and take it out again. Love working with a pencil, friends. There you go. Yeah, I think I made him a bit too dark around here. Right, so we're getting there now. Look, you can see how it works, can't you? Am I on my own or are we all right with this? Now, if we... Start there. See, now I'm going to start at the top again. Literally, I start at the top again and look at what I'm doing and say, right, okay. He looks, she looks like the girl and he looks like the fella. So if that's the case, right, mate, you're the bloke. So your horns are bigger and they're bald because of your antics aren't they? So the horns are bigger and they're bold. Bald. There you go. Right, so we've turned him into the fella now. The power of art. Isn't that good that you can do that? Just turn a woman into a man. 
by changing his horns. There, look. There you go. So we've got husband and wife now. Hey! <laughs> I think he looks a bit more like a bloke. He looks a bit blokier. Hey? Yeah, I think so, don't you? So you can make the make him look a bit. So I'm not sure about this bit here. So let's just get that bit there going. I think that needs a bit of work on the shading there. That's better. Like that. Looks a bit too much like an, a nose, doesn't it, with that line there. Let's get rid of the line. Hmm? And can I say that I'm really... I can't tell you how, how good it is to, to hang out with you on a, mon on a Monday morning. You know, it's so good. It's, it, I can't even describe really what a relief it is. And, and to be able to come in and draw and not worry about you being judged. I don't, you know, I don't, I, I, I really am not worried about whether, I mean, I'm quite chuffed with this. I think he looks great, but I just wish I could get you to n feel that as well, that that freedom of not worrying about, you know, just JFDI, as Dave says, just do it, you know. Don't worry about whether it's going to look like a, what, well, you're going to put it forward to David Attenborough for National Geographic? No, we're just hanging out together. We're having a, we're having a giraffe, we're having a laugh, right? We're talking about what giraffes get up to. That looks a bit weird. That's it. A name for a giraffe. Are we going to pick a name for this? these giraffes? These two? Our, that looks good like that. Let's get rid of that bit there. I like that better. Right. Okay. And then really dark in there because it's really like he's got quite an ear going on here. Right, yeah, I like that. His ears further back on that side. <clears throat> what names have we got then? Shall we have a vote on it? Names for a giraffe. Is these are the ones that our friends have come up with, or it? Yeah, they have. Brilliant. Okay, what have we got? Gerald, Georgina, Gwendolyn, Gordon, Grant, Jeffrey. Brilliant. Gary, <laughs> I've decided, right, my ride, my rules. This is Gary. <laughs> right, let's get some texture going here, friends. Here you are, Gary. Okay. What about the girl? There, that looks good. See? Isn't it funny how huh? a couple of little lines? Put a little bit of a shade in there as well. Hey, eh? looks like he's got fringe now. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's got a fringe. No, get rid of the fringe. <laughs> I tell you what, there's nothing like Monday mornings, setting off the week, the corporate week, drawing a giraffe with me mates. <laughs> Love it. Right, so we've got Gary. What about the girl? Come on, Gary needs a mate. Have we got a good one? Gladys? Gladys. Gertrude? What do we think? Come on, we need a, we need a, this needs to be darker in there because it's really shady. I know. And do I have any professional training <laughs> in drawing? What do you think? No, I don't. Let's have a look what else we know about giraffes though. Giraffes are friendly. <laughs> yeah, well. 
There you go, they're friendly. Gary and what are we on? Gladys. <laughs> Jill. <laughs> That's it. Bingo. Gary and Jill. Definitely Gary and Jill. Perfect. So we've got Gary and Jill. Look at that. <laughs> Uh, Gary and Jill, giraffes are friendly, they are vegetarian, their necks are six foot long, their legs are six foot long, they can reach a speed of 34.7 miles per hour, their heart is two foot long, that's 20 and weighs 25 pounds, they've got 32 teeth but mostly at the back, they've got no upper front teeth, they use their lips, they make the male headbutts the, oh, this is what I told you. The male headbutts the female in the bladder until they pee. Then they taste the pee to check she's ovulating. <laughs> and they've got panoramic vision. Well, with eyes like that, you would expect no less. Eh? Now let me see if I've got have I got a darker pencil? I wonder if that H. H for hard. There. See? Just a little darker. And now I'm going to go in there and I'm going to finesse. See, I could spend the entire Monday doing this, but I can't because I've got an important meeting at 11.30 with the directors of Create and Craft. They're coming to the building. They're coming to Clarity Towers. I know. The place has never been so clean. We've had the hoover out. We've had the air fresheners out. We've blitzed the kitchen and the loose. Yet they ought to come more often because it's never been so clean at Clarity Towers. <laughs> but there you go. So I hope that you've enjoyed what we called these. Gary. G for Gary. And Jill. And G for Jill. I love capital letter for names, Barbara. Gary and Jill. There you go. And that, my friends, will set us off on a great Monday, don't you think? I, I think we're there. So um, have a great week. Have another go at the G for Giraffes. Do show us on Facebook if you fancy. Show us what you've done. Um, I think we've... We've completed G for Giraffe, and I will see you next Monday then in the shack, the first time we do the shack again. Don't forget the craft along on Friday night, but we'll be doing H, H for happy on Monday, okay? We've done G for Giraffe. That'll do. Accomplishment. I love it. Okay, take care. Have a good week, and wish us luck at the meeting. Lots of love, and thanks, Paul, for your help. Bye-bye now. Good to have your company. G for good.